Robin, what is a blood count? A blood count is a blood test. And it's a blood test that looks at how your bone marrow, which is the factory that makes your blood, how it is coping with the treatment that it has received. It's a very commonly requested test called an FBC, full blood count, or CBC, complete blood count. It's actually a series of tests looking into what is the picture of your blood at that moment in time. So let's get back to your question about what is a blood count? And we've said it's taking a picture of what your blood looks like at a particular point in time. So what do the red cells look like, the white cells, and the platelets? Okay, so it's essentially what are the levels of the different components in my blood at any given time, which will give us a very clear view of what my body's doing. It'll give you a very clear view of how you are responding to treatment and how you're recovering from treatment. Okay. Well, let's go through an example. So as we know, blood is made up of a liquid portion and a solid portion. Okay. About 55% of all of your blood is actually made up of plasma or the, the, the liquid, the watery fluid. And the remaining 45% is made up of that solid portion, which is in fact your blood cells. Red cells, white cells, and platelets. Okay, let's start with red cells. Red cells hold on to a molecule called hemoglobin. And hemoglobin in turn holds on to oxygen and transports it all the way around your body through the blood vessels. So your red blood cells or hemoglobin are essentially little trucks inside of your bloodstream which carry the oxygen around your body and transplant it wherever it needs to go. I love that idea. So yes, the red cells are a transport medium. They're your taxis okay. and they hold on to the molecules hemoglobin which could be thought of as the passengers inside this taxi. And those passengers are holding on to briefcases or haversacks or rucksacks or suitcases, which is oxygen, and transporting them around the body. Next, we have white cells. White cells are part of your defense force. And like any good defense force, it's not just made up of one type of cell. There are actually five different types of white cells, each with a very specific function as part of your defense force keeping you safe. So your, your immune system is your white Body, blood your cells? your immune system is your blood cells, yes. Okay. Very, very important in fighting <coughs> off infection and remembering how to fight off infection or foreign invaders. Okay. Platelets? Platelets are involved in clotting of blood. Okay. So very important if you have a small little scratch, you're just not going to bleed out from that little scratch. Those little platelets will rush to the point of injury, combine with some other uh, ingredients called fibrin, and together they form a little plug to stop the bleeding happening. I thought that's the scar that you got. The scar would be part of your skin, hmm. but the little plug or the clot that's formed is, is part of your blood. So it's actually the blood congealing and forming a little plug to block off that wound or that hole inside the blood vessel. Okay, so it's the little plumbers inside of your blood vessels which run around and fix all of the little leaks by using silicone. Uh, brilliant way of thinking. The blood count is an automated test. So what happens is typically a little sample of your blood would be taken through a, a prick in your skin. And that little sample of blood would be taken to a laboratory. In the laboratory, there would be a computer which is specifically made to count all the various cell types. And that computer has been programmed to know exactly what a red cell would look like, what a white cell would look like, and what a platelet would look like. The most important thing for you to look at as you pick up your blood result, the first thing that you look at is your identification. Is this your blood result? It's really distressing to have a look at a, a blood result which you cannot recognize at all, only to find in fact it's not yours. So please always remember, you pick up your test, first thing you look at, is this me? Is that my correct name and is that my correct date of birth or identification number? The second thing that you look at always is the date at which this particular sample was taken. Because most often you don't just have one full blood count taken, you generally have a series of these tests taken over time. And it's really important to know, is this the most recent and relevant information that I'm looking at? So then let's break it down into categories because this result tells us a story about your blood cells. So what is important to note is if you see a blood test result 
compared to somebody else's, which might have come from a different laboratory, the first thing you might notice is that the reference ranges, the ranges which are on this test, considered to be a normal reference range, might be slightly different between laboratories. Also, reference ranges between men and women might be slightly different as well. So let's have a look at that first paragraph on this particular example that is giving me information about my red cells. It tells me what my red cell count is, so how many red cells do I have circulating in my body. It talks to me about hemoglobin, that molecule that we discussed, that the red cell holds on to. It tells me how much hemoglobin I've got. It also talks about a hematocrit. Sometimes it doesn't say the word hematocrit, it says packed cell volume or PCV. It means exactly the same thing. Your hematocrit is basically telling you how much of all of your blood is made up of those red cells. So if it says hematocrit, my hematocrit is 45%, it means 45% of all of my circulating blood is made up of red cells. This is now very specific information that the doctor will have a look at, giving that doctor information about what is the concentration of hemoglobin that you have, what is the average amount of hemoglobin that you have. There's something called an RDW, a red cell distribution width. That's giving information to the doctor about from the smallest red cell you have to the largest red cell you have, what's that variation in size? All of which giving information about the red cells and how the red cells are coping with your treatment. The next section is very often about your white cells. So how many white cells do you have in total? What percentage of white cells do you have? And then it starts breaking down the various subtypes of white cells. The information given will say, all right, I've got X amount of white cells, but now it breaks it up to say, of all the white cells that I've got, how many of those white cells are made up of neutrophils, of lymphocytes, of monocytes, basophils, and eosinophils? Each of those subtypes, part of your defense force with a very specific job to do. And then it says neutrophils, and directly underneath that, neutrophils absolute or abs. What that is, just to interpret that, it means how many neutrophils do I have as a percentage of my total white cell count? And neutrophils absolute, well, if I had to calculate that, what is the absolute number? What is the actual number counted of neutrophils that I have? And you will see that that is repeated for the neutrophils lymphocytes, total number of lymphocytes, the absolute lymphocyte number. Monocytes, the percentage of my blood made up of monocytes, the absolute number of monocytes. The last paragraph gives us information about our platelets. What is our ability to clot our blood looking like? Are the platelet counts very low? In other words, I could be more prone to bleed than usual. Or are my platelet counts very high? In fact, I'm actually clotting too much. A very important reminder is that it is not our responsibility to interpret our blood counts. That's why we have our doctors, that's why we have our healthcare professionals to do that. They are trained to do that. So although you may be looking at something and it's pretty scary or you think it's very scary what you're looking at, trust your doctor and healthcare professional to give you advice to assist you with understanding what's going on. What I've tried to show you is the type of information that you could expect to find in your blood count and perhaps that might provide some insights as to what questions you might like to ask your healthcare professional. If you would like to ask us any more questions, please feel free to jot down those questions in the area below and we'll do our best to get back to you with an answer as soon as possible.